for our first matrix review problem, we're going to be reviewing the three different methods that we discussed for solving systems of equations. The first technique we'll use is Kramer's rule. Now, Kramer's rule is a method of solving systems of equations that uses determinants, that uses values of square matrices. The way you calculate the determinant of a matrix is you go to the matrix menu on the calculator, which is second and then inverse. You have to move the cursor over to math, and then option one is the determinant. And we start off by finding letter D, which is the determinant of the coefficient matrix. What we're going to do is we're going to take the coefficients of the x's, which are negative 1, 2, and 5, coefficients of the y's, which are 1, 3, and 4, and coefficients of the z's, which are 2, 1, 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to find the determinant of that coefficient matrix. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into the matrix menu, enter in the determinant, then go into your alpha zoom matrix template and enter in this three by three matrix and this is going to be what your d value is now kramer's rule only works when d is not equal to zero and here our d turned out to be negative 15. So that means we can proceed with Kramer's rule because our D value is not zero. Now what we're going to do is one at a time start replacing the coefficients of each variable with these constants with this one, negative two, and four. So what we're going to do is we're first going to take the coefficients of the X's and we're going to take them out and then replace them with the constants. So for d sub x, we're going to find the determinant. The x's are now going to be gone, and in their spot are going to be the constants, 1, negative 2, and 4. The y coefficients, 1, 3, 4. The z coefficients, 2, 1, and 2, still remain. So for matrix dx, we're going to take the coefficients of the x's and replace them with the constants. Now we're going to find the determinant of that 3x3 three three matrix. Take a moment, find the determinant of that 3x3 three three matrix. One shortcut that you can use is to copy and paste your D matrix and then just replace the coefficients of the X's with those constants. Here, our dx value turned out to be negative 30. Next, we're going to set up matrix dy, and that's going to be the determinant of the matrix where the coefficients of the y's get replaced with the constants. So the coefficients of the x's the negative 1, 2, and 5, they return. But now we're going to take the 1, 3, and 4 out, and we're going to replace those with the constants 1, negative 2, and 4. And then our coefficients of the z's, 2, 1, and 2, still remain. So for matrix dy, we replace the coefficients of the y's with the constants. And my advice is to go back on your calculator, copy and paste your D matrix, and then just replace the 1, 3, 4 with those constants. Our DY value turns out to be 45. So we found D to be negative 15. We have DX to be negative 30 dy is 45 and then last what we're going to do is we're going to find dz 
And that's going to be the matrix where the coefficients of the z's get replaced with the constants. So we're going to find the determinant. The coefficients of the x's, negative, two, negative 1, 2, and 5, they return. Coefficients of the y's, 1, 3, and 4 return. But then now our coefficients of the z's get replaced with the 1, negative 2, and 4. And we're going to go about finding the determinant of that matrix. And what I would do is always go back to matrix D, copy and paste that on your calculator, and then just replace the coefficients of the z's with your constants. And here our dz value turns out to be negative 45. So now we're going to get our solution. Remember, your goal is to figure out what x, y, and z are in those equations that make all three true. And according to Kramer's rule, x is always equal to dx divided by d, y is always equal to dy divided by d, and z is always equal to dz divided by d. So to get our x value, we're going to go dx, which was negative 30, over d, which was negative 15. So in all three of those equations, x was equal to 2. Our y value is equal to dy over d. Well, that would be 45 over negative 15. So our y value is equal to negative 3. And then our z value is equal to dz divided by d. So that was negative 45 over negative 15 or positive 3. So that's how we go about solving a system of equations by using Kramer's rule. Next what we're going to do is we're going to solve the same system of equations by using inverse matrices. And the way we solve by using inverse matrices is we take the inverse of the coefficient matrix and we multiply that by the constant matrix. So we're going to take the inverse of the coefficient matrix. Well, we set up our coefficient matrix before. Here are x's, negative 1, 2, and 5. Our coefficients of the y's, 1, 3, 4. And the coefficients of the z's, 2, 1, 2. We're going to, on our calculator, take the inverse of that matrix. And we're going to multiply that by the constant matrix 1, negative 2, and 4. So take a minute, multiply those two matrices together, and I'll show you how we interpret our solution. Now we're multiplying a 3 by 3 matrix, that was our coefficient matrix, it's inverse, by a 3 by 1 matrix. Here the middle numbers match, so our multiplication is defined. And here our answer matrix is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. And it turns out that x is equal to 2, y is equal to negative 3, and z is equal to positive 3. A lot of times when you solve systems of equations, you write your answers in parentheses in alphabetical order. So there's our ordered triple. No surprise that we get the same solution that we got when we did Kramer's rule. Our last method of solution is going to be solving by putting our matrix in reduced row echelon form, which is abbreviated by RREF. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your matrix menu, which is second, and then the inverse button. Move your cursor over once to the math menu, and then you have to scroll down and get to letter B, which is reduced row echelon form, RREF. 
what you're going to do is you're going to set up a three by four matrix. You're going to take the coefficients of each of the variables, the x's, negative one, two, and five, the y's, positive one, three, and four, the z's, two, one, two, and then now the constants in the same matrix, one, negative, two, four. And what you're going to do is you're going to tell your calculator to do the redu reduced row echelon form of that three by four matrix. What your calculator is going to do is to take that matrix and use the algebraic approach that you were taught about in Algebra 2 and then turn that matrix into a matrix that looks like 1, 0, 0, a number, 0, 1, 0, a number, and then 0, 0, 1, and a number. And that's going to tell you the solution to what X, Y, and Z turn out to be. And not surprising, your calculator is going to give you the same solution that you achieved the first two methods that we used. Namely that x is equal to 2, y is equal to negative 3, and z is equal to positive 3. So those are the three methods of solving systems of equations by using matrices. For our next set of problems, we're going to be using these four matrices to answer these questions. Now, these are problems where it appears we're going to be using the same matrices repeatedly. So as opposed to using the alpha zoom template for matrices, what I would do instead for a problem like this is to use the matrix menu, the second inverse, and actually store and save the matrices into your calculator. Recall, in order to store matrices, what you want to do is you want to go into the matrix menu, second and inverse, move the cursor over to edit, and then edit the matrix by entering in the dimensions. Since matrix A is a 2 by 3 matrix, set up a 2 by 3 matrix, press enter, and then manually enter in the entries of the matrix. So that way, when you want to save your matrix, all you have to do is just recall the letter of the matrix that you're using to answer the questions. So take a minute, store these four matrices into your calculator. A common question I get asked for the matrix menu is, what happens if you had a matrix that was saved in? For example, I was doing another problem where I was using a matrix A and it was a nine by three matrix. All you do is just select matrix A, then go to edit, and then just, simp then just simply change the nine by three, just change the nine to, in this case, a two by three. And what it will do is it will give you that template that you can type in your numbers. So then matrix A will be now this two by three matrix. And when you have your matrices all, sta all saved into your calculator, all you have to do is just recall the various matrix. So to do number one, matrix A times matrix B, just recall and tell your calculator to type in A times B. Now recall for matrix multiplication, the only way in which you can multiply matrices together is if the number of columns of the first matrix corresponds to the number of rows of the second. So I want to take matrix A, which is a 2 by 3 matrix, and multiply that by matrix B, which is a 2 by 2 matrix. And the only way in which you can multiply matrices is if the number of columns of the first matches the number of rows of the second. So matrix A times matrix B, you're getting an error message, which means you write undefined. And that's because 
the columns of the first don't match the number of rows of the second. However, matrix multiplication is not commutative, meaning if I now want to take matrix B, which is a 2 by 2 matrix, multiply it by matrix A, which is a 2 by 3 matrix, now they are multiplicatively compatible because the columns of the first match the rows of the second. And your answer matrix is then going to be a 2 by 3 matrix because your answer is always rows of the first matrix by columns of the second. So that's why for number 1 your answer is undefined, but for number 2 you actually have an answer. From 3 as you doing 3 times matrix A minus 4 times matrix D. And remember, with matrices, when you have a quote-unquote in exponent form, the letter T, that stands for the transpose of a matrix. That means to interchange the rows and the columns of the matrix. So matrix D is a three-row, two-columned matrix. That's a three-by-two matrix. The transpose of matrix D is a two-by-three matrix, where the first column becomes the first row. The second column becomes the second row. So the transpose of a matrix means to interchange the rows and the columns. And on the graphing calculator, the transpose of a matrix is found in the matrix menu under the math option and number 2. So in order to calculate this problem, you can simply type this expression into your calculator, assuming that you have the matrices saved into your calculator. You do not move the T into the exponent spot by using the exponent button. All you do is you type in 4 times matrix D and then immediately go to the matrix menu and go to number 2 and the calculator will put the T in the exponent spot. As long as your matrices have numbers as the entries you can do matrix questions right on the calculator. For number four, you need to take matrix B and find its inverse, and you're just going to use the inverse button that you would normally use for numbers. Recall that not every matrix has an inverse. Sometimes matrices are singular matrices, and remember, singular matrices have no inverse. So sometimes what you'll do is you'll go about telling your calculator to find the inverse of a matrix and instead of giving you an answer it will give you an error message. So sometimes matrices are singular. But here when you do matrix B and then press the inverse button you do get an answer which it's probably better to convert to a fraction form so this is what the inverse of matrix B is. What's the significance of that? Well, if you take matrix B, and if you multiply that by this inverse that your calculator is giving you, what you will end up with is the identity element for a 2 by 2 matrix, which is this 2 by 2 matrix with ones along the main diagonal and zeros every place else. So if you take a matrix and multiply it by its inverse, you get the identity element for a square matrix. When your matrices have variable entries, like these next two examples, you have to use traditional algebra rules to get your solution. For example, for this first one, we're subtracting these two matrices, and these are both 1 by 3 matrices. Both of these matrices have one row, and they have three columns. 
So the only way you can add or subtract matrices together is if the matrices have the same dimensions. And what you do is you work with the, the corresponding entries. You take the value that's in the first row, first column spot, and in this case, we're going to subtract the value that's in the first row, first column spot of the second matrix. So here for my answer, I'm also going to be left with a one by three matrix. In the first row, first column spot is going to be negative x minus one minus y. And I can't simplify that, so I'm just going to write it as x minus y minus one. Now we're going to work with the first row, second column values. And here we're going to take negative 2x and we're going to subtract negative 2. So in the first row, second column spot is going to be negative 2x plus 2. Finally, in the first row, third column, we're going to take negative 5y and we're going to subtract negative 3x. So negative 5y minus negative 3x, that's going to give us a positive 3x minus 5y. And that's what our answer matrix looks like. Again, it's a 1 by 3 matrix, but now we have variables. For the second problem, here we have 4 row 1 column matrix adding to another 4 row 1 column matrix. So our answer is also going to be a four row, one column matrix, and we're going to work with the corresponding values. So here, the first row, first column, we're adding to the first row, first column. So here we're going to have for our answer, Z minus five plus a negative three Y. So we're going to write that as negative three Y plus Z minus five. Believe it or not, that is in the first row, first column. It just happens to have three terms. Now we'll take the second row, first column, and we'll add that to the second row, first column. So here we're going to be left with negative 6 plus 3z, or 3z minus 6. Now the third row, first column by the third row, first column. So this is going to be negative one minus six Z plus five plus Z. So that's gonna give us a negative five Z plus four. And then finally, in the fourth row, first column spot, when we add those together, we're going to get a three Y plus four Z. So this is what our answer matrix looks like. Next, we're finding the area of a triangle and we wanna use matrices to do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use, again, the concept of the determinant of a square matrix. The area formula is gonna be one half times the determinant of the matrix that's formed by using the vertices. So here we're going to take negative two, two, one and three, and three and zero. And since only square matrices have determinants, we're going to use as a placeholder of one in the last column. So we're going to, on our calculator, do one half times the determinant of this matrix. Sometimes the sign of this determinant is a positive number. Sometimes the sign of this determinant is a negative number. So that's why you're going to see the formula written as positive or negative a half times the determinant of the matrix. And all you're going to do is basically give a positive answer. Recall the symbol for the determinant is actually putting a matrix inside of absolute value bars. So you might see the expression written this way. And if you do 0.5 a half times the determinant of that matrix, 
notice you get negative 5.5. So this would be a situation where you would multiply it by negative a half. Because remember, your area is always a positive value. So since the area can never be negative, if your area is positive, that's your answer. And if your area is negative, you make it positive. It's basically taking the absolute value of that expression. And that's how you find the area of a matrix, the area of a triangle, by using matrices. Finally, we have a matrix word problem. Old MacDonald has three fruit farms, farm one, farm two, and farm three. On these for farms, he grows peaches, apricots, plums, and apples. They give you this matrix, which shows the number of boxes for each type of fruit that each farm produces. And it says he sells peaches for $45 a box, apricots for $15 a box, plums for $34, and apples for 17. We need to find the income from, from each farm. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up matrices. If you look in, at the data that's given to you, you basically have in the first column the number of boxes of peaches each farm produces. And clearly what we wanna do is multiply the number of boxes of peaches by that 27. So we're going to set up a matrix. We're going to take the number of peaches, 152, 236, and 95. We'll take the number of apricots, 225, 185, and 132. The plums, 395, 245, and 0. And then the apples 277 183 and 285 and what we want to do is we want to take that matrix and multiply it by the prices but remember the only way you can multiply matrices together is if the number of columns of the first that has to match the number of rows of the second so what do the columns of the first matrix represent? They represent each type of fruit. Peaches, apricots, plums, and apples. So there's four columns of the first matrix. That means the second matrix has to have four rows and whatever the first column of the first matrix represents that's what the first row of the second matrix has to represent so since this first column represents peaches i need to put the prices of the peaches namely 27 dollars in that first row and the second column of the first matrix, apricots, that has to be the same as the second row of the second matrix. So I'm going to put the apricot prices in the second row. The first matrix, the third column represents plums. That means in the second matrix, the third row has to represent the prices of plums. And the first matrix, the fourth column, represents apples. That means the fourth row of that fourth matrix has to represent apples. The key is, in order to multiply matrices together, the number of columns of the first has to match the number of rows of the second. And besides them having to match, they need to stand for the same thing. So look at your first matrix. Your first matrix is a three by four matrix, three rows, four columns. Your second matrix is a four by one matrix. It has four rows,
but only one column the prices. Now these two middle numbers match. That means these matrices are multiplicatively compatible. And that means your answer matrix is going to be a three by one matrix. So take a moment, multiply these two matrices on your calculator, and then let's interpret the results. Our answer matrix is going to be a three by one matrix. And here's what our answer matrix looks like. Now, what do these numbers mean? Well, this is a three by one matrix. Whatever this three represented, which in this case is the number of rows of the first, those are gonna be the same as the rows of your answer. So what did the rows of the first matrix represent? The rows of the first matrix represented the three different farms. So that means my answer matrix, its rows represents farm one, farm two, and farm three. Because this three came from the three rows of the first matrix. What does the column matrix represent? Well, our answer has one column. Why? Because the second matrix had one column. What did that column represent? It represented the prices. So that means this column represents the prices. This is basically telling you the income for each farm. So we know that farm one, the income from its inventory, $25,618. The inventory from farm two, $20,558. And for farm three, $9,390. Now the question asked, how much will the farmer make in total to get that answer? All we're going to do is add those values. So here in total, $55,566.